living. Hey, for it being tutoring, 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 tutor be mad, I've got neck. For it being tutoring, for it being tutoring. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Whip with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's lesson is going to be about finding the least common denominator, or you can even say finding the lowest common multiple, because it's the same thing. Finding the lowest common multiple and finding the least common denominator is the same process. Why is this something different? Because one, you're dealing with a fraction. The other one, you just need the multiple for God knows what. But it's the same process. So let's not get stressed out about it. I'm going to show you a couple of ways to find this, okay? First of all, let's say that I'm trying to find the LCM or the LCD. Let's say I'm trying to find either, okay, for 9 and 15. Well, one way to go about doing that is to look at the multiples of 9. The multiples of 9 are 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54. Oh, that's an ugly 4. I hate that 4. 54, on and on and on, right? If I look at the multiples for 15, that's going to be 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, on and on and on. So what we're looking for, whether it be the least common denominator or the lowest common multiple, you're looking for the first number that they have in common within their multiples. So if you look at 9 and 15 in their multiples, the first number that they have in common is, where is it, 45. There it is. So that's the LCD or the LCM, depending on your need. Okay. So I'm just going to say least common denominator or LCD for the rest of this video. But just know that it's the same process to find the lowest common multiple or least common multiple, depending on your book, they say either way. Okay. So, um, yeah. And that's it. That's it. So LCD, that's going to equal to 45. Done. Let me put a red box around this because that's what I like. All right, so there we go. So 45 was the first multiple that 9 and 15 had in common. That's the same process that you use to find the lowest common denominator. And once again, you can also use it to find the least common multiple. Both things, same process. Okay, here's the other way I wanted to show you. And the other method I use the majority of the time. So I will actually be using it the majority of the time in this video, by the way. And that is to use the prime factorizations using the factor tree, okay? So the prime factorization of 9 is 3 times 3. And the prime factorization of 15 is 3 times 5. So what you want to do when using this process is you want to, first of all, list your prime numbers. So I have 3 times 3. For 15, I have 3 times 5. The LCD, or LCM, depending on what you need it for, requires that you take for each factor the highest amount of times that it occurs in one factorization. So looking at the factor 3, it occurred twice in the first factorization, the factorization for 9. In 15, 3 occurred only once. So I'm going to take the highest amount that it occurred in one factorization. So I'm going to take two 3's. That's what I need. 3 times 3. Mm-hmm. I don't need the third one. I only need the highest amount that occurs in a factorization. Then the factor 5 only occurs one time. So I only need 1 5. From there, you're going to multiply this out. 3 times 3 is 9, and then 9 times 5 is going to give me 45, which is my answer. This works every time. All right? And also, it's more practical because if you look here, what if our multiple would have occurred way out here somewhere? I mean, sometimes, how long must you go to find this multiple? Exactly, right? So I'm going to appreciate the fact that this can cut down a lot of time, a lot of writing, a lot of multiplying in order to find that lowest common denominator, that least common denominator that I am looking for. Okay? So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's problem number one. Let's check out problem number two. In problem number two, we have 20 and 40. All right. If I were going to look at the multiples of 20, I have 20. 40, 60, 80, 100, on and on and on, right? And then looking at the multiples of 40, I have 40, 80, 120, 160, on and on and on. So the first multiple that both 20 and 40 have in common is going to be 40. That's it. Therefore, the lowest common multiple or the LCD, if you're looking for that, is going to be 40. Mm-hmm. Done. 
Now, I do want to inform you that there is a shortcut to this particular problem, and that is anytime your smaller numbers will go evenly into the larger ones, use the largest number. That's all you have to do. For instance, since 20 goes evenly into 40, in other words, 40 can be divided by 20, you only have to use the largest number. Yeah. Or you can look at it as ignoring the 20. So since 20 goes evenly into 40, ignore the 20. Just use 40 and you're done. That's it. That works every time. So anytime you're looking for the lowest common multiple or the least common multiple or the least common denominator for a list of numbers, a string of numbers, any of those smaller numbers that go evenly into a larger number, ignore them. All right? They're going to automatically be a part of the answer. So you don't even have to worry about it. Okay? So there you go. That's 40 for that particular problem, that method. Then, looking at your prime factorization. The prime factors for 20 are going to be the following. Well, let's look and see. If I use a factor tree, this would be uh, 2 times 10. I can break up 10 into 2 times 5. So therefore, 2 times 2 times 5 is going to be the prime factorization of 20. If I break up 40, I'm going to use 5 times 8. Bring down my 5. 8 breaks up into 2 times 4. Bring down the 5, bring down the 2, break up the 4 into 2 times 2. Listing these factors side by side, I have 20 made up of 2 times 2 times 5. I have 40 made up of 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And my LCD, or LCM, will contain the following. It will contain the highest amount of each factor that occurs in the factorization. So looking at the number 2, 2 occurs twice in 20. 2 occurs 3 times in 40, so I need 3 twos. All right? You're going to always take the highest amount that occurs in one factorization. So I'm going to have 2 times 2 times 2, and then my 5 occurs once. Yes, it occurs once there, but the highest amount that occurs in any one factorization is one time. All right, so I know that 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 5 gives me 40. And so there's my answer again. Mm -hmm. Once again, you can avoid that drama by recognizing that 20 will go into 40 evenly and just using the bigger number. That's it. All right, that's problem number two. All right, let's move along. Let's move along. All right, so from this point out, I'm just going to write down the prime factorization because that's my preferred method anyway. So... 3 is going to be ignored, okay? I'm ignoring 3 in this problem because 3 will go evenly into 18 and it will also go evenly into 24. Therefore, any multiple of 18 and 24 will automatically be a multiple of 3. So once again, your smaller numbers that will go evenly into one of the other numbers that you're trying to compare to find the lowest common multiple or the least common denominator, uh, you can ignore those, all right? So do that. Save some time. The prime factors of 18 are going to be the following. 2 times 3 times 3. The prime factors of 24, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So here, my LCM or LCD, if I can spell it, there you go, is going to be the following. It's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 because at the most, 2 occur 3 times. 3 occurs at most twice, so I'll need two threes. So what I'm going to do here is I know that 2 to the third power is 8. I know that 3 times 3 is 9, and 8 times 9 gives me 72. So that's my result. 72 is the first number that 3, 18, and 24 will go into evenly. All right, that's problem number 3. Let's keep it moving. In number 4, the prime factorization of 22 is 2 times 11. In 12, the prime numbers are 2 times 2 times 3. So for my LCM or LCD, I'll need how many twos? Exactly, I'll need two twos because at the most, it occurs twice in a factorization. I'll need one 3 and I'll also need one 11, just like so. Then from there, I'll be multiplying 2 times 2, which is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, and then 12 times 11 is going to give me 132. And this is my answer. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Next problem. Let's keep it moving. 
Let's keep this thing moving. I want to show you guys a lot of examples. So looking at number five, we have some algebra variables involved, right? So here, there are times in algebra that you'll need to find the lowest common multiple or the lowest common denominator. So when given a situation where you're comparing 4x squared y to the fifth power and 10x cubed y, this is one way that you can look at it. If you did want to break it down into its prime numbers, you could say that this is made up of 2 times 2 times x times x times y y times y times y times y times y mm -hmm. for 10 x cubed y you can break this down into 2 times 5 times x times x times x times y so your lowest common multiple here I'll just do it that way right for this one remember it's the same thing as LCD is I'll need two twos I'll need a 5 the highest number of x's that occurs in one factorization is 3x's. So I'll need 3x's. And the highest number of y's that occur are going to be 5. I'll need 5 y's. Let's squeeze that in there. Okay. So what that tells me is that my result is going to be 2 times 2 times 5, which is 20. So I'll have 20 x to the third power, y to the fifth power. Now, in the future, ladies and gentlemen, I would suggest that you not do what I just did. In fact, all you have to do when it comes to the variables and their exponents is you'll simply take the highest exponent on each variable. For instance, notice that out of the x squared and x to the third power, your highest exponent is 3. That's why you will have x to the third power here in your answer. When it comes to the y's, you had y to the fifth power and y to the first power. So just take y to the fifth power and be done with it. That's it. But if you had to show your work, you can definitely do this. But like I said, hey, there's an easier way. All right. And that easier way is to do the following there. Now, that zero looks like a six. So I'm going to fix that. Oh, no, no, no. I think I just made it worse. I think I just made that worse. But OK, I hope that was worth it for you. There you go. 20 X cubed Y to the fifth power. That's the answer. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. All right. In the next problem, I'm comparing x plus 3, which is, which is just that one factor. That's it. And then I have x minus 1. Well, that's just that one factor. When you have factors like this in algebra and you're looking for your lowest common multiple or your lowest common denominator, you'll just do the following. You'll need to multiply these two together, and that's it. So to find the lowest common multiple or the lowest common denominator, if it's a rational expression, then you just simply multiply these together, and that's all you do. Okay? And you'll leave it in that format. You don't have to even do anything else to it. Okay? So no distributing, no foiling. Just leave it just like that. That will be the lowest common multiple. Remember that x plus 3 is just one quantity. x minus 1 is one quantity. So just because it has that familiar x does not mean that you need to write it twice or ignore it. You just simply need to multiply these two factors together in order to find out the LCM. All right? That's it. Okay, let's move it on. Let's move it on. In our next example here, I have a quadratic trinomial. So when given a problem like that and asked to find the lowest common multiple, a.k.a. the lowest common denominator, you will want to factor first, okay? So if you have any difficulty factoring these types of problems, please check out our Factoring Quadratic Trinomials Part 1. In fact, just check out the whole series because it shows you how to factor those quadratic trinomials. Well, two numbers that will multiply to give me 2 and add to give me 3 are going to be 2 and 1. So the factorization of this trinomial here is going to be x minus 2 times x minus 1. That's it. Two numbers that will multiply to give me 6 and subtract to give me 5 are going to be 6 and 1. So I'll have x plus 6 times x minus 1. Okay. When it comes to my LCM, let's just call it LCD this time, I'm going to need each factor, all right, the highest amount of times that it occurs in one factorization. So here I'll need an x minus 2. I only need 1 x minus 1 because at most it occurred once in a factorization. And I'll also need, oh, that's really ugly. And I'll also need x plus 6. And that's it. That's the result. That's the answer. All right. So there it is. There's your LCD. X minus 2 times X minus 1 times X plus 6. Done and done. So the first step was to factor first, and then each individual factor became a part of that lowest common multiple, a.k.a. lowest common denominator, if you're working with rational expressions, a.k.a. fractions. All right. Let's keep it moving. All right.
Here, number eight, this is going to be our last example for this lesson, ladies and gentlemen. The factorization of x squared plus 6x plus 9, this is a perfect square trinomial, is going to be x plus 3 times x plus 3. In other words, two numbers that are multiplied to give me 9 and add to give me 6, 3 and 3. Then when I look at 15, two numbers that are multiplied to give me 15 in the second expression and add to give me 8 are going to be 5 and 3. So I'll have x plus 5 times x plus 3. So when it comes down to the LCD or the LCM, once again, I take each factor the most number of times it occurs in one factorization. So notice that in our first factorization for x squared plus 6x plus 9, we actually have x plus 3 to the second power. We have two of these. So I'll need two of these as well. So I'll need an x plus 3. To, oh, that's an ugly 3. All right, much better. I'll have x plus 3 times x plus 3. I need both of those. And then I'll also need an x plus 5 because it occurs once in the second factorization. Now, I won't leave my LCD like this in this format because we can write it in exponential form. We can simplify it a bit further. So not necessarily multiplying it, but rewriting it. I'm going to write this as x plus 3 squared times x plus 5. All right. And that'll be it. And once again, you can use that for your rational expressions if you need to add or subtract. That's when it'll be necessary for you to do that process with those type of expressions in algebra, adding fractions. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and like our Facebook page. We would really appreciate it. Okay. So thanks a lot. Peace. So what you waiting on? Everything is online. Just hit the website. They even got FaceTime. Subscribe to the YouTube. Request the video. Watch your math skills go from all right to incredible. They got math, got algebra, got geometry. Pre-cal calculus, can't forget trigonometry. 